I absolutely love long exposure seascapes and waves. But when I first started out, I had no idea what I was doing. And being from Arizona, it was hard for me to get to the ocean and practice as much as I'd like. But over the last several years, I've been fortunate enough to travel around the world and photograph some absolutely breathtaking seascapes. And I've come away with some tips I think will help beginners uh, take that step into a very fun and engaging type of photography. In this video, I wanna go over a few basics like the bare minimum equipment you're gonna need, a few apps to help you with both planning and shooting these types of shots, as well as create impactful images using a few easy concepts that I use every single time that I go out. I'm gonna assume you have a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. So with that out of the way, we're gonna start with the tripod. This is essential for shooting long exposures. You're not gonna be able to hand hold your camera for the shutter speeds needed to show motion in the water without getting a lot of camera shake and ending up with blurry photos. The next is filters. If you're shooting during the day or outside of golden hour, you're gonna need ND filters. These will allow you to lengthen your shutter speed so that you can show that motion in the water. We'll go over some examples later on on how to use these filters if you've never used them before. Now, since I don't use grad filters like this, I use these smaller uh, round magnetic filters by Case that are extremely lightweight and much smaller than these giant square filters. If you're interested in these, I have a link down below in the gear section of this video's description with 10 percent off. The next piece of gear that I think can help is a shutter release of some kind. It can be one of those ones you plug into the side of the camera, it can be wireless, or it can be a smartphone app that's used for this very same function. The idea is to be able to trigger the shutter button without touching your camera. Now let's talk about some techniques that I use out in the field, how I actually take the shot. First, Never turn your back on the ocean. That's how you get hurt and that's how you get your gear confiscated by the waves. So don't leave your gear unattended. Usually I try to keep my backpack on me or back away on an elevated surface. You don't need rogue waves coming in and drowning all your gear. The next thing is your tripod. If you're shooting on the beach, take your tripod and push it down into the sand as deep as it will go. Now this is usually a lesson you're gonna learn pretty quickly. As soon as that first wave rolls in and you see your tripod just start to sink, it's inevitable. But I've seen some advice from people that have used things like, you know, to put things under your tripod legs like CDs or something to keep it from sinking. But that just means that I have to carry around more stuff and it's not something that I'm into. I carry enough gear as it is. I normally use a two second timer to take my shots in landscape photography in order to avoid the camera shake. But with seascapes, I like to use continuous high. I press the shutter very lightly and try to minimize shaking of the camera and as the waves roll in and then back out again, I just hold down the shutter button and fire off shots. Again, very lightly on the hand as I don't have to try and time the perfect wave with that two second uh, delay on my shutter. I can choose it later on back in the camera and yes, generally I have a bazillion images to choose from. Also, as I stated earlier in the video, if you don't want to risk shaking the camera, it's probably better to get some kind of remote trigger to plug into your camera or to use an app to take the shots if there's one available. So that's how I got this photo here, taking multiple shots and picking out my favorites later on in the computer. Uh, but some of you eagle eye viewers may notice something a little bit off. This is actually a blend of two images with two different shutter speeds. The waves here in the background is one half of a second shutter speed, while the foreground leading lines is taken with a one second shutter speed. It was the same exact location, the same exact time, but I was experimenting with different shutter speeds and I really liked both elements. This textured wave crashing in the background separates the ocean from the sky. In this image, I used only one exposure. Let me know which one you guys prefer. Now blending images is something that I do on occasion. This image here is a blend of several images taken of a crashing wave. Because I'm shooting multiple exposures, I can take different parts of a crashing wave, separate moments of the same event, and blend them all together to get a complete experience of what happened. It isn't just a one third of a second event. A crashing wave lasts several seconds, so combining several moments together creates a unique photo of that. Now, there are a few tools that I use both to plan and shoot my seascapes. The first is Magic Seaweed. This app is a great resource for tide charts. Understanding the tide charts can help first and foremost with safety. Knowing if the tide is rising or falling can be crucial to knowing whether or not you can go out on some rocks to take photos without getting stranded because you have a rising tide. 
It also helps to know if you're shooting in tide pools when the tide is low or knowing what tide is best in a specific location for big waves. Now this next app needs no introduction to those of you who watch us on a regular basis. We talk about it all the time, but photo pills helps out so much when it comes to long exposures. When you want to shoot those really long exposures uh, to get images like this, you're usually using shutter speeds from 30 seconds to up to several minutes. The exposure calculator inside of photo pills is essential for figuring out the shutter speeds. Uh, for shutter speeds up to 30 seconds, you generally don't need to use this. You can usually use your histogram to see your exposure. Every camera maker is different when it comes to this part of long exposure shutter speeds. Some cameras don't have shutter speeds available longer than 30 seconds. You have to put it into bulb mode in order to take these longer exposures. But there are now more cameras like my Nikon Z7 II that can do shutter speeds of up to 15 minutes or even longer. Now, when you put your camera into bulb mode, at least for my Nikon Z7 II, once you go beyond that 30 second mark, both the simulated exposure on the back of the LCD and the histogram no longer reflect the actual exposure. This is why you should really be using this exposure calculator. This helps you do the math to get the correct exposure when using something like a 10-stop ND filter. You simply take a properly exposed photo without the filter, then go into the app. And this doesn't have to be photo pills. There are some free exposure calculator apps available. And in the app, you put your test settings. These are the settings without the filter. Then you choose your filter. In this case, we're gonna use a 10 stop. Now make sure you're solving for the shutter speed here and make sure your aperture and your ISO are matching. And now that you have your shutter speed length, it's that easy. Now, for those of you using bulb mode or timer mode, just make sure you understand how that works with your particular camera model. Okay, now we have our gear list. We have some apps to help us plan and shoot some long exposures at the beach. Now let's talk about the why. What makes a good long exposure photo? How do we choose the best shutter speed in order to get the look that we want? Let's look at an example where I took three photos of the same exact subject, but I chose different shutter speeds to give three completely different looks. In this first photo, I chose a shutter speed of about eight minutes. I used a 10 stop ND filter to get that shutter speed, but let's talk about why. Why I decided to go with a really long exposure over something like one second. First, it was overcast, heavy cloud cover. This was during a time of year when the sun was on the other side of the island, so I didn't get any direct sunlight during the sunrise or the sunset. I had flat, even light. These conditions generally make for great black and white photos, as well as being able to produce more fine art type images. So a really long exposure is perfect. Also, the clouds were moving towards me, so these long exposures, they create streaks and lines that show movement in the clouds. What I'm trying to accomplish here is showing a relationship between what is moving in the scene and what isn't. This concept is so important with long exposures, so just remember that one. Now, I took one exposure without a filter to get my base settings. Then I used my exposure calculator. I chose a 10 stop ND filter, which gave my eight minute shutter speed. In this photo, the same pier, but I chose a one second shutter speed. This gave me a completely different look and feel from the first photo. This was a different time of year where the sun was directly behind the pier. Uh, it was a very high contrast scene with much more dramatic light. The one second shutter speed gave me these lines in the waves as they receded back into the ocean. To me, this was perfect for both the subject and the conditions. The lines are strong and well-defined, which complements the high contrast of the rest of the image. This results in a much louder and more in-your-face style image than the more ethereal feeling of the eight minute exposure. Now, in this final photo of the set, I chose a one third of a second for my shutter speed. And once again, the conditions helped me make that decision. This was the same time of year as that very first image, but during sunrise. The sun was coming up over the opposite side of the island and there was pretty good cloud cover throughout the sky. The clouds acted like a big soft box. It made the light more soft and subtle. The waves were rolling gently into the bay, so the one third of a second shutter speed gave those gentle waves a soft textured look. The shutter speed was just long enough to show a little bit of motion, but it gave a lot of soft texture to the breaking waves. So for me, everything about this image whispers soft, calm, and peaceful. All of the decisions were made with that in mind. 
So you can see that taking in the conditions, the light, and the subject, you can make conscious decisions with your shutter speeds that complement these elements. Everything is done with intent. Now, for those of you brand new to Seascapes, I hope this gives you guys a solid base on where to get started. And for those of you who have a bit of experience, I hope this gives you some new ideas to experiment with. My wife Chris and I recently went to the Californian coast to photograph the beautiful Pacific Ocean. If you want to come along on a trip to the beach, check out this video right here, and we'll see you over there.